Also, some new developments today with President Obama's health care law as questions come up about a company that has been awarded a $340 million loan to set up these health insurance exchanges. Despite having a history of consumer and regulatory complaints, I mean, lots of complaints. Now, the House Oversight Committee started asking questions about this company and how exactly it got selected to participate in Obamacare, uh, given its checkered history. And that committee just told us within the hour that it is now getting some responses to its inquiries. We're not sure what kind of documents the House Committee is seeing, but Stu Varney is the anchor of Varney and Company on the Fox Business Network, and he is up to speed. So, so Stu, it just so happens that this company we're talking about uh, that's going to help, you know, we talk about these exchanges under Obamacare, and I always refer to it as like the Expedia.com. You go online, you say, okay, this is how old I am, this is my medical history, what are my options? And they say, okay, you can have this pro plan or this plan. And under Obamacare, the government is creating these supposedly nonprofit entities that are going to compete with private insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Well, one of these nonprofit companies got the $340 million loan from the feds. And it turns out that the person who started that company knows the man at the top. You are accurate entirely. The person we're talking about is Sarah Horowitz, an old friend and colleague of President Obama. She set up, in, uh, some years ago, she set up something called the Freelancers Insurance. And that is a cooperative organization which is getting $340 million from Obamacare to set up a cooperative exchange. There is an ideological link and a personal link to the President and Sarah Horowitz. $340 million, lots of money at stake. Now, it turns out that New York State regulators who've been looking at this freelancer's insurance calls it the worst insurance company in two consecutive years. The criteria for deciding what is the worst, I'm not clear on, but they call it the worst insurance company for two consecutive years. Now, look at the ideological content here. This is a cooperative organization. It's one of 24 which are being set up under Obamacare. A cooperative health insurance exchange is essentially a non-profit. It is hostile to the idea of profit in medicine. It is a private enterprise. It is a, it's a non-private, the exact opposite of private enterprise. And it is owned by its members and its clients. It is essentially socialized medicine writ large. And $2 billion worth of taxpayer money is going towards setting up, essentially, socialized medicine health insurance exchanges, of which Ms. Horowitz's organization is one. Ideological contamination and personal relationship involved here. Now, do, is there any question of this Ms. Horowitz's connection with President Obama? Because just l looking at the, at the articles online, and, and the Washington Examiner did a lengthy piece on this, they claim that they were members of this, this founding group back in May of, uh, or back in 2008, and they worked together very closely in, in, in connection with George Soros. And then suddenly the, the records started to sort of get scrubbed clean of yes. any association between President Obama and Sarah Horowitz, who now we find out winds up with $340 million in, in loan um, so she can help service Obamacare, despite the fact that her company is not well respected from the look of it and its reviews in New York State. That's, that's the, the personal relationship which was expunged after 1999. Sarah Horowitz and President Obama, or then State Senator Obama, were considered to be core members of this pressure group funded by George Soros. After 1999, Mr. Obama's message, his name, was scrubbed from the records to eradicate any connection between the two. But the connection was very strongly there. The two were considered core members of this organization set up by George Soros. This is the left exercising or uh, stressing and influencing public policy by the use of George Soros' money mm -hmm. and community organization. That a real, is the link. There's a real question about what, why, why the feds would allow... Uh, this group, Ms. Hor Horowitz's group, to participate in Obamacare, uh, despite what, I mean, the New York, you, you listed off a couple, but in, tw in 2011, the New York in State Insurance Department ranked her company last mm -hmm. among commercial insurance, saying she had the most complaints, and she was 49th of 50th among all the state's insurance providers. In 2012, they ranked her worst, her company worst in terms of complaints, and 51st out of 54 among all New York-based insurers. Are, are,
Guess who gave this to her? I'm not. Is it an open and notorious thing where they say, these are all the people who applied and this is why Sarah Horowitz won? It is open. I have not looked into it as closely uh, as, as that. Uh, I will say that maybe the subtext of Obamacare is the desire for socialized medicine. And to set up cooperative exchanges is one step in that process. And to commit $2 billion of taxpayer money towards the setting up of essentially socialized medical organizations, that is taking a step towards socialized medicine, which, as I say, could be a subtext of Obamacare. The, again, the Washington Examiner piece suggests that little is known on how the feds evaluated the applicants yeah. for these loans. I, I don't have the criteria. And in, we don't know the criteria know. either. No. And, and apparently she's moved on. Now, now she, Sarah Horowitz, it, was picked in December to serve a three-year term as a director of the Federal Reserve in New York, but her organization is the one uh, that's at issue here. So it's an interesting question. We'll continue to watch the House Oversight Committee to see whether they have problems with what's been done here. Seward, thank you. Megan.